Dying Light, the board game, is being published by Glass Cannon Unplugged. You might know this publisher from games like Apex Legends and Frostpunk. Dying Light is their third game. Dying Light is a co-op survival game, playable for one to four players and is set in a post-apocalyptic world. It has the look and feel of Zombicide or Dead of Winter, but they play differently compared to Dying Light. Dying Light has a campaign that rewards backers, having Kickstarter exclusive bonuses and receiving the game 8 weeks before it hits the stores. That is something we see less and less these days. The pricing of this game is very sharp, as a standard pledge is 60 euros. But that is without VAT and shipping. For a general European country that will still uh, be approximately 90 euros. The deluxe pledge is 110 euros and this replaces the cardboard enemies with plastic minis. Though again, you need to add the extra expenses and you will end up with approximately 155 euros. Dying Light the board game is made up of a series of campaigns, each consisting of a series of scenarios. I counted 11 scenarios, but I haven't got a clue how much playtime that equals. If you don't like randomness, I don't think you would be interested in Dying Light the board game. The game consists of a lot of dice rolling. Some dice results can counter negative dice that need to be rolled or reduce the amount of dice you need to roll to jump. Cards can be used to enhance some of your rolls. What are thumbs up or thumbs down to my opinion? Well, let me first reiterate that how Glass Cannon does this campaign is a giant thumbs up for the backers. The campaign page is a little bit all over the place, but I'll let it slide for this time. I can't really get my fingers behind it, but Dying Light feels fresh. The dice gameplay is spiced up with dice placement and card play. From an art point perspective, there is a definite glass cannon style present in this game. I really like their dark art style. The price. At this point in time, there are little to no campaigns that claim to be able to produce and deliver a game at this price point. Sure, most of the game is cardboard, but you still have to consider that there's an IP involved. No endless looting cycles. One of the downsides of playing Zombicide or Dead of Winter was the looting part. Most players always try to get more or better loot. Dying Light lets loot work differently. It doesn't allow it to take center stage. The setup of buildings in 3D terrain is done very smartly. It's quick and it doesn't allow for much wear and tear. The day and nighttime mechanic is done well. At first I wasn't really convinced, but with stronger enemies being able to spawn and the enemies getting feistier, that feels right at home. Ok, listen up. This old and conservative man has to moan about something, right? It might even be considered as an angry rant by some of you. What do Apex Legends, Dante's Inferno and Dying Light have in common other than being funded by crowdfunding and not having been delivered? They all use cardboard 3D terrain to create height. I believe it's a gimmick and a waste of storage space in the box. I'm certain it has more negative effects when playing a game than advantages. Stop adding this to the board games until it is a proven concept. Ok, hold. Yes, I can see why in this game it is an integral part of the game. More so than it might have in others. But still, making it 50-70% to 70 smaller will still do the job. And if you are listening to me, which I doubt, but hey, I'm on a roll, then make it of plastic. Yes, it needs more storage. But building the buildings and returning them to the box will eventually eat up your cardboard. I know this because our U-boat is slowly becoming worn after 10 games. Dying Light has a way better system of building buildings. Other elements do need to be slotted into each other. At times it feels like there's a bit too much going on in this game. We haven't played it, but the dice placement and negating mechanic feels a bit too fiddly. Here I am drawing a comparison with Frostpunk, another game made by Glass Cannon. 
The phrase less is more would have been the right choice in Frostman. And my fear is that they might do too much in Dying Light once more. I think this game is done well and it's not coming into my collection because of the height of the terrain and I believe we have more games in this category that will hit the table with more ease. Well, I am taking a breather for now, but I am curious. Do you feel I am right or do you disagree? Let me know down below and we might have a good discussion about it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.